Welcome to the first part of the module on concurrency motivations and challenges. In this part, we explore key motivations for developing concurrent mobile device software. These days, a prime reason for using concurrency is to leverage advances in hardware and software. Multi-core processors are becoming ubiquitous, to the point where it's getting hard to buy a computing device that just has one core. The link at the bottom of this slide describes a wide range of quad-core Android phones. Operating systems like Unix, Windows, and VXWorks are now optimized to exploit these multiple cores efficiently. Likewise, middleware such as Java Virtual Machines, Android, DDS, and .NET can take advantage of multiple cores. Knowledge of concurrency is therefore necessary to program multi-core systems effectively and improve various software quality attributes. For example, hardware and software advances can help improve the way concurrent programs are structured to avoid overly complex and tangled event-driven software. The link at the bottom of this page lists some common concurrency patterns, many of which we cover later in this section. Historically, the GUIs and early versions of Windows, Mac OS, and Unix were structured using an event-driven programming model, where a single event loop processed user interface events and initiated file and network I.O. operations in one thread of control. The link at the bottom of this slide provides more information on event-driven programming. Programming a purely event-driven software model is hard, however, since the structure of its control flow is obscured in both time and space. In particular, any time a program might block, such as when it performed a read operation on a network connection, it had to post an event on a message queue and handle the operation later in its event loop, which was awkward to program and hard to optimize. The link at the bottom of this slide describes the pros and cons of a common event-driven programming pattern called the reactor. Now that modern middleware, operating systems, and hardware have better concurrency support, more effective ways of structuring application and system software have emerged. For example, Android enables multiple threads to perform long-running computations in the background, which maps efficiently onto multiple cores. Moreover, these background computations can block independently of each other and the user interface thread, which allows developers to structure their software more cohesively. The link at the bottom of this slide describes the pros and cons of an architecture pattern called half-sync, half-async that's used by many concurrency frameworks, including Android, as we'll cover later in this section. To illustrate one common Android concurrency model that uses so-called worker threads, here's a snippet of code from an application we'll explore throughout this MOOC. This application enables a user to download a bitmapped image from a remote server across the network. This example has a click listener that handles buttons pressed on the Android touchscreen. When a user presses the download button, this code starts a worker thread that runs in the background and blocks while downloading a bitmapped image. After the image is downloaded and processed, it's displayed by the user interface thread. If you look carefully at this code snippet, you'll see how concisely structured it is. In particular, the image download and display logic is cohesive in time and space, rather than being scattered throughout the code, as would be the case in a purely event-driven solution. The link at the bottom of this slide describes the Android worker thread model, which we'll cover later in this section. Hardware and software advances also allow developers to improve application and system performance, which is another key motivation for using concurrency. For example, developers can parallelize and overlap communication and computation in multi-core Android mobile devices, which helps their programs run faster. The link at the bottom of this slide provides more information on parallel computing. Concurrency can even be applied on a single core device to improve perceived response time. For example, an Android user interface thread can interact responsively to gestures and input from a user while other worker threads execute long-running tasks in the background and perform blocking operations on the file system and network. The link at the bottom of this slide provides more information on responsiveness in computing systems. In summary, there are several motivations for developing concurrent software for mobile devices. It helps developers effectively leverage technology advances such as Moore's Law and other means by which commoditized hardware and software gets better, faster, and cheaper at a regular pace. Concurrency also helps developers meet the quality and performance needs of their applications and services by going what's beyond what's provided by low-level software infrastructure and hardware. For example, concurrency allows developers to structure their software so it's more responsive to user interaction patterns, as well as easier to understand and evolve over the program lifecycle.